Vice News made a documentary about Airsoft. One more thing. <laughs> Now we have an issue because Chris always does like this, which is not good for the microphone. No. Okay, uh, good everyone. I can't do any gestures now, but I'm just gonna do it like that. We are having- Don't do it, okay? We <laughs> We're having a Vice documentary about Airsoft. I already watched it, Joseph didn't. And I'm still excited for it because it's the first properly done Airsoft documentary. That's like good quality. Which explains Airsoft to the general public, I assume. Yes. And it's actually pretty good. So we are interested. You should be also interested because this is how the public would see us. Can you put my headphones on? I think, I think you can remove this. Ah! Let's get started. I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. I am a silly war nerd. Every game yeah. should have that. Why would you come out here to hike and be in pain and be dehydrated, get no sleep? Fear. And obviously a lot about snow sims. Yeah. Let's go, let's go into real part. life Call of Duty for a couple of days. You don't have to join the army and deal with all the actual bullshit. It's one of the only places that you can act like every part of what you are doing is life and death. Welcome to the Azuri Front, NATO. Awesome intro, I gotta say that. I like that, yeah. But they portrayed, until now, only the military aspect. Like, I would say that's like, what, 10% of Airsoft? To the general public, the most interesting part, I would say. I mean, that's what Vice is after. A story, a cool one. All of my Airsoft equipment. Jet. So these are all fake cool guy. guns. The term we use is replica or toy gun. It's completely non -le You know, this is so unfair. I've seen Chad's garage. It doesn't look like this. I think Chad cleared up his garage for like two days. When you go in there, you can't even step on the ground because there's so much mess flying around. I'm sure he cleaned up. Yes. And I can already You can't trick me, Chad. I know how your garage looks like. He has a pocket knife and something else, so he's a proper proper yeah, guy. Yeah, he represents he us. Little plastic six millimeter BBs. Oh, flash We say light. replica flash because light. it's a one-to-one -one scale of a actual gun. Jed Del Castillo is a former Navy hospital corpsman turned YouTuber. He orchestrates military simulations or milsim games. Think cosplay meets Call of Duty. So this is it's basically a replica of an AK-104. This is an SR-25 replica. So like that's a Russian style gun. You've got an American gun right here, another American gun. I have a fully licensed Glock 18C. Point it down at the ground. Okay. That's gonna shoot full auto like really that. quick. Yep. Oh, no safety. You know, I'm actually so glad that they picked Chad for this because I think he's he is the person to represent the international as a community. Honestly, like he's a fair player. He's great. He's doing this as a hobby, as a full-time job. His wife is doing it as a full-time job. So he's like as airsoft as he gets in America, California, where which is, I would say, even one of the airsoft hotspots around the world. So props to them for picking the right guy. Airsoft came along after World War II and was invented in Japan. Guns were widely banned in the country, but the laws were looser for people seeking out a perfect looking fake M16. In Milsim, the battles are played out as if they're real, like the guns. Josh Warren helped create Milsim West, one of the most realistic simulations out there. The games are run by a group of veterans called the Cadre, including Jet. Many of them actually served in elite military units. Jet's wife, Leah, is one of a few women in Airsoft and has an online following under the nickname Unicorn Leah. Her style is what I might describe as G.I. Jane meets Burning Man. I don't think it was the military aspect that drew me in. You don't see that very it... often anymore. BBs actually stuck in or on the skin. Like it used to be a thing when I started, we had basically no limits. Maybe it's natural, it... the natural evolution of the airsoft. You know, the ones that have two weak skin, they don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's probably the evolution of the limits. <laughs> or actually, invention of limits. The because... invention of the chronograph, yeah. yeah. true. It was more of the imagination part, the where you could be creative, you could still like play as an adult. 
This weekend's game takes place at an Air Force base that's been vacant since the Cold War. Over the next few days, players will simulate a fight between Russian forces and NATO in Aziristan, a thinly veiled Azerbaijan. I have a feeling it was chosen because of its remoteness and perceived obscurity to this mostly American crowd. Azerbaijan is dealing with an actual conflict where thousands of soldiers have died, but no one here is discussing it. Who's ready? Who is ready to fight? Yeah. Go. Okay. I want to see just shirts and socks. Good to go. Good to go. Okay. Did you want those socks yet? Yes. Right. Shirts and socks. Why? Did you take a look at this? Yes, I did. It's like so the safety. Like you need to change it. Or? No, it's it's like so at the Austrian military that is done as well. It's before you go into a certain mission or you know into the field for a couple of weeks they check your entire backpack they go like everyone has to have a pair of socks everyone has to have five spare magazines uh -huh. everyone has to have a vest everyone because otherwise all of them arrive and one guy forgot his tent <laughs> they're like okay great ah uh, so it's like a group check of everything it's a group check yeah uh -huh. it's a complete check that's what they call it okay thought i packed my socks all right he's yeah. got five pair of everything so preparing for this for the past six Father, weeks it's in there i don't <laughs> All right, next up, eye protection. Yeah, that's how I felt when I was preparing for the island. Everything, like, three times. As we've seen, participants in Milton West take it extremely seriously and insisted that if I were to participate, that I play a role alongside them. So, of course, war correspondent. We're spending the day embedded with Russian forces. AKA the bad guys, who also seem to have more fun. Since What's your I name think that's Harry? actually not exactly how it should be. Like you assign the Russian forces the role of bad guys and then like uh, the good guys. I think it should be more neutral. But are they the bad and the good guys? Well, nobody knows, but they clearly said Russians are the bad guys. I don't think this should be part of Airsoft. Mm. But it's the bad guys facing her because she's the press from the Americans. Now, oh. actually, actually listen to this part now because the Russians okay. portray the Americans as the bad guys. Where are you from? My name is Kuni Vasionia. I am from Portugal. Here working for militia for Russia. They hired the Matador. We are here to kill Americans. Have any of you actually ever been to Russia? No. No, okay. <laughs> so, how do you research the character? Metal Gear. Metal Gear. <laughs> Movies and TV shows. Yeah. It's Rocky IV, very good. Uh, capitalism, well, as uh, Russian militia, we understand it crushes the soul, it takes people's uh, ambition. Uh, it produces nothing but beer swilling, pot bellied capitalists. Why did you enlist? My kid, he's 14. He doesn't ask for much. He doesn't ask for an Xbox. He doesn't ask for a PlayStation. He wants to do this. And so we drove six hours to come down here and do this. He's, he's in heaven, right? You know, I saw this in America multiple times, and I never saw this in Europe. I Dad with his kids going to an SFK. Fields in Czech Republic where I played the most time, they are like, kids, go and play. And they just like wait in the car. So that there's two kinds of airs of parents. There's the airs of mom, which just goes there, puts the kids into the fields, and then she drinks coffee while watching them. And then there's like this guy who goes to visit him west with his son. <laughs> so which I think it's cool. I mean, if you want to spend time with your kids. It's how like, you bond with your... That's perfect. So did you get him into it or did he get you into it? I got it? him into it. Yeah. Right. He likes it though. I'm happy to have him do it. It's uh, it's a good wholesome American thing. It's hard to imagine Americans and Russians actually duking it out in the Caucasus in 2021. Other Milsims stage more politically dicey events. For instance, where white European dudes dress up as the Taliban. When we did the video in in the in America, it was called Uprising Something. I was wearing a pancake hat and a beard. Do you remember? And I was I was playing as a Taliban. Man, we got a lot of shit for it. Really? Yes, we did. Back then, this was absolutely new for me. This was one of the first prisms that I played in America, and they they were like, "This is the side we're playing at. This is what you have to." Wear. I was wearing a man dress actually. After reading those comments, where I realized that this is actually controversial. I kind of not realized it back then. Difficult I think this topic. is a very hard topic. Like, if you understand airsoft, if if you know what it's about, having fun, being outside, friends, all that. 
I don't think you think too much about how controversial it is. Exactly. You just play the role, you enjoy the day, and that's that's it, right? But if you see it from the outside, I can understand some people or groups of people getting mad or just you know, voicing their opinions. I remember when the German reporter came mm. came by and he like he asked lots of questions and I could answer all of them properly. Like I had a good reason of why we're doing this the way we're doing it. But then he actually brought up that there is simulated executions in some Milsim games and I even participated in one of them. And that was one of these where it's like hard to defend. Like does this does this really have to be like does this need to be part of the game? And during the game, man, you just don't think about it. You just, you just go for it. You have fun, you enjoy it, it's immersive. My opinion is, it's okay because we understand it's a game. What's not okay is that this happens outside. Uh, obviously, yeah, obviously. It's a game. It's like um, the Call of Duties where there's there's parts in the games where you actually go through an airport and you just mow down civilists. And they took those out in certain countries because they, even though it's a game, they don't think it's okay to let you go mm. through this experience. When we already talk about games, like computer games, I think that's even worse because the audience, generally speaking, is way younger than Milsim players. Milsim players, I mean, how many kids have you seen there? Not many. One. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's... Yeah. Whatever, it's, it's I, I leave that up to you. Let's yeah. continue. That's by Josh's design. Please do not share your like QAnon theories about the pandemic. I know the election. I know the over, voice. Please do not share your nuanced political opinions. No one gives a shit. Everybody go ahead and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. I will not be a dick. I will not be a dick. I know this is a game. I know this is a game. I will not cheat. I will not cheat. I will pick up my trash. I will pick up my trash. I will respect everyone and the venue. I will respect everyone and the venue. And when I get salty, when I, get salty I will always remember. I will always remember. I'm with my fantastic friends. I'm with my fantastic friends. In our fabulous costumes. In our fabulous costumes. And we're having a fantastic time. And we're having a fantastic time. What I'm going to go over right That's now cool. is the sleep plan for. I've never, I've never seen that before. That's cool. Yes. Once we get to the patrol base, the southern approach is the most likely avenue of approach the enemy will take, especially at nighttime. Flashlights on and be ready to move. Basically like hide and seek right now. Hurry up and wait. That's tonight. In a nutshell. Everybody is just kind of figuring out where they're sleeping. This looks pretty bad. That's yeah, actually better. Whoa. I'm gonna be sleeping outside. <laughs> Jet Squad made it through a mostly sleepless night with minimal casualties. When Josh created Milson West, making the event uncomfortable was sort of the point. I want to help people, I guess, understand a little bit of what that feeling is like. And so the way we try and do that is by endurance, is by making people do it for as long as possible to the point that they're exhausted, fatigued, you know, mentally stressed. Just like in real war, you have to obey orders and be strategic about who and when you shoot. What's the moment when you feel like you lose track of reality? Uh, usually when you start getting in gunfights. I think that moment when you first hear like contact, you're like, oh shit, like, yeah. shit's popping. William Sherman once said, war is hell. But it's a hell we keep trying to go back to. We're fascinated by combat. Or is it that we're fascinated by a fictional version of it? And one where there's no actual casualties? Get off my big phone! Jets just sent his squad into hostile territory where they're outnumbered. I want you to clear that building. I have contact on the opposite side of the road to me on the building park with a lot of good So this isn't good. I've got a jam in my grenade launcher tube. That's <laughs> <laughs> asshole. Can you get the jam in grenade oh launcher? Oh, Come on, gun. <laughs> Gun's not working. On my antenna headed east. Roger that. Hey, come on, Jeff. Push my back there. Oh, shit. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. This way, this way, this way. Have you ever 
later game where you have to shout. We have to go like, ah, just fall to the ground or? Yes, I did. Yeah? It was a zombie game at night. Yeah? And it was the best thing ever. Gotta say it makes it, it just makes it more immersive. It makes it, it does, more fun. It but I've been wondering, like, they picked a very niche of a niche sport. Yes. Like they picked Milsim. It's, it's a deep amazing. End. <laughs> it, it makes f f nice footage, but I don't think the majority of games, it's not representative. But they also say this is not Azov, this is Milsim. Yes. Yeah. So I think yes. it's, yeah, we can't say it's a nice documentary about Azov because it's not. It's about Milsim, yeah. And also they picked the Milsim of the Milsims, which is Milsim West. Like, yeah, yeah, it's the most Milsim as it gets, like. At it's, least in the English speaking. I'm actually amazed how realistic everything looks and yeah. how they do it. It's perfect. I'm not sure if this is the standard because they obviously do it for the camera. Ah, I've seen it. It, it is. Yeah, like it if is. you get shot, people just go like, ah! <laughs> just fall to the ground. That's cool. When I was there, honestly, I've, I've seen scenes where Chet, I mean, he's always having a camera all the time, so he probably doesn't have a camera. But anyways, Chet got shot right next to a river and he actually fell into the river and he just floated in the river and the just took him down the stream. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's just for the immersion of the others, right? That's the next level. Yeah. That's the next level. no idea who won that battle. And honestly, that guy probably doesn't either. That's very true. Milsim yeah, so. tend to see the sport as an outlet for natural human aggression, but not everyone agrees with that. That's not airsoft. No, it is. They use... Protesting oh, it's blanks. They use blanks, yeah. And man, I hate, I hated the blanks. I was, I was hit and I shouted, medic! And this guy comes over and I think, yes, finally a medic. And he stops right next to me. He racks his gun, just goes like, bam, 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 bam. And yet, he had, he had like ear pro on. Oh yeah. But I didn't. And I was just, pee. Man, but just imagine the next or the, yeah, the next level of safety. Like you don't want one of the normal rounds to sneak in or, I hope they have some sort of, I don't know, a cap or different magazines or the, I don't know. I don't shoot blanks, okay? But I don't think they have. It's just the ammunition looks different. It's fucking scary, actually. Yeah. I hope they have decent checks for so this. called war toys for decades. Mm -hmm. It actually even happened in the military. I yeah, it happened. You in, told me, right? Yeah, it was actually in our unit where we also trained with blanks. And you, you screw this red cap into mm -hmm. your barrel to make sure to get the pressure for the reload. Yeah, yeah. And one guy, after the after the whole thing happened, actually had a hole in his in the thing. Yeah? Mm. He shot all the way through and they recognized it afterwards and it, it was a huge, it made a lot of noise. It was like, okay, they actually shot at each other and one guy had a life, life round in there and it goes through this mm. protection cap. So if it happens at the military where they do multiple checks, ah, you know, I don't want to be the one restricting and you know, I don't want to be the party stopper here, but Ugh. I don't know how, how I would feel about doing this. Obviously, if I know the people and I know there is a proper check that they are reasonable, but going to uh, 200 people Milsim with lives, uh, not lives, like blanks. Yeah. Ah, ah. That was written in Russia. Like at the Russian Milsim I was, that even the military participated and they all had blank fire guns. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. You don't really see the person that you're injuring and you just think of it as a target or something like that, you get desensitized. But the correlation between nerding out on airsoft and digging actual guns isn't clear cut, at least for the people I'm meeting. At Milsim West, there are people from across the ideological spectrum. At times, their neutrality seems deliberate. What could be more absurd than pretending that a war game isn't political? But maybe neutrality is practical? It ensures everyone gets along. Or at least so when it comes to politics, I think that's a, that's a good point to talk about. Like I never experienced anything political in airsoft. But that is because it's actively tackled. At least in, in, in Austria, I don't know it's in Czech Republic, but if there's an FFA and they make an announcement that the game is happening, it does say no political talks. This is not a space for mm -hmm. talking about politics or anything controversial. I'm and I think even in games like soccer or something, I would say that's way more there than it is in airsoft. No one is gonna say, 
oh, that guy's, uh, I don't know, XYZ, he's gonna take a gun and murder a bunch of people. But in Airsoft, it's so, it would be so easy to say that this is, you know, some kind of activist gonna use mm. guns against, you know, to push through their political interest and so on. And I think that's why the Airsofters are so careful with this. Which is good. It's really good. Doesn't kill each other for real. Okay, that was a blank uh, fire. How do they do it? Like they carry one real airsoft and one real blank fire, or they no. just have one blank fire and they just like don't shoot airsoft. In no. an airsoft game? If a guy with a blank fire gun shoots at you, you have to react. You at least you have to run away or cover, or you are a good participant of the build and you just die. Ah, yeah, you just fall. You just fall and go, ah! <laughs> and the guy that's... behind the guy goes, ah, oh, this is so cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. That's it's a, a, it's good, a gentleman's rule, basically. That's a good r uh -huh. rule or, yeah. Maybe. But there's no escape. <laughs> All the grenades, I know that Jet already has some issues, right, with that. Yes. When it comes to hearing. Jet's hearing is screwed. And he's saying this himself, it's just Milton Games. Like any good war correspondent, I'm chasing the story. How are you feeling? Are you dead? You're dying right now? Do you have any dying words to your mother? Please burn my computer. <laughs> That might have been me, I'm really sorry. Oh, okay. What is also interesting, they, they, nobody is wearing like mesh masks. Here in Austria or Europe, mo a lot of the people are wearing face protection. But not at Milsims. If, if you go to Border One and you play for three days, you just say, screw it. I don't want to walk yeah, for five it's... hours for this two minutes of combat where I might get shot in the face. It's just not Yeah, it. that's true. It's, it's probably because it's Milsim. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Go back. Also, it's more realistic. Oh, that's getting spicy. Of, yeah, of course. Oh, At least they. Stop moving. For the average Milsimmer, this game provides the kind of brotherhood in arms you've only seen in movies. But for people who have experienced actual warfare, it's about something different. It's changed my life. I mean, honestly, when I got out of Ranger Regiment, it was really hard to figure out what I wanted to do next. Uh, that's a pretty hard high to come down from, to be quite honest. Like, I won't deny it, it's a little bit of a weird death cult. And, and so having that mindset all the time, like, that doesn't always jive well in regular life. Speaking from personal experience, it's hard to think about the political implications of Milsim when you're in the heat of it. Later, watching this footage, I'll be kind of embarrassed to have taken the LARP this far. Medic! <laughs> but in the moment, none of that's on my mind. Even when you're getting shot in the face, Milsim weirdly makes sense. Like in any good war movie, the Russian and NATO forces are going to clash in one final charge. They're on the other side like 10 feet. The last battle is always kind of nuts, and that's why everybody looks forward to the last battle so much. It's a very fun thing to do, but you know, realistically, when you think about it, it's scary, right? I would never want to be in an actual situation like this. Don't you ever want to just get away from reality? It's like why people want to go to play video games and shit. I'm an EMT, so I've seen some stuff, and it just makes me release the stress and just have fun with a bunch of bros and just have a good time. What do you get out of this experience? Just like a feeling of peace, honestly. It's just interesting to me that you use the word peace because we're simulating war. It's the opposite of peace. There's something about engaging in practice fighting that makes me not want to actually fight. You know, I get my, my dose. Oh, Jesus. Nothing about Milsim was really what I expected. 
It was as if playing a caricature made some of these guys less likely to be one. Where'd that game come from? It was mine, brother. Oh. <laughs> that was yours? Yeah. I still kind of wish humans didn't find it so fun to shoot each other. But if we did it more in Milsim and less in real life, that would be a good thing. I definitely heard of uh, Ron Star with the V device. I have 59 confirmed kills. Dang, yeah. maybe even a Congressional Medal of VD on him? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the one guy who tells you how many kills you even though you didn't ask for it. So, what do you think? Uh, I think it's pretty good. It's hard to comment on something that I didn't like because I liked most of it. Um, the only thing really is, I don't think it's representative of Airsoft in general, but again, it's about Milsim, so yeah, I get it. it that's what it is. Yeah. And it's cool. It's really cool. What I'm really surprised is that they portrayed it like it is. Like, after watching this, I would want to try. It's not like I yeah. would be thinking the people are crazy, they are doing weird stuff or anything. It's political or things like this. No, it's, it's pretty good. And I think it's mostly because they picked the right people as well. They can explain it in a yes. in a sensible way, if that's even a word. Like they they know how to explain to people what it actually is about. Mm. I talked to Chad about it a little bit, and it seems like they have a massive process to pick the people for their for their storytelling. So, good process right there. Thumbs up for Weiss. Good, good job. See you guys. <laughs>